It strikes me when you talk about this house and what was here that this was kind of almost the best house you'd lived in up until now. You literally lived everywhere, like 13 other places yeah. before the age of... Eight when I came here. Yeah. Eight or nine. Like where? Where were some other of the places? We lived in Scone um, when they were building the dam there. Dad worked on that. We lived in Tumut. We lived at Yurangabilly when they were building the snowy scheme. Dad was on that. We lived in Griffith. We lived at um, Wellington. I had a shop at Wellington for a little while. I ended up, there were 13 uh, different towns anyway. And not always in houses either. No, no. We almost never had a house. But mostly it was almost, you know, we lived on a, on a, slept on Central Station for a couple of nights. Is that right? Yeah. After the war, there was something like 350,000 people out of housing in mm. New South Wales. So we went and uh, Mum took us down to the Housing Mission office, my, my three sisters and myself. Yeah, and for six weeks, we, my sisters and I, sat properly in the uh, Housing Commission office to try and get on the list of, of getting a house. And Mum got to know the clerk in the office. And he said, you know, if you really want to bump up the list, you're going to have to do something. So my two sisters went to stay with in-laws, uh, with the uncles and aunts at Paddington. And the four of us, my next sister, myself and mum and dad, took our suitcases and we went to Central Station for two nights. And we camped there on the seats of Central Station and slept there. And the second night, the cops came. And I remember the two policemen talking to dad about why we were sleeping there. And he explained we didn't have any house. And uh, so we jumped, they put us in the, the blue Mariah, the black Mariah, the police car, and took us down to the Housing Commission office. And they bumped us up the list. We jumped the train to Liverpool and went to a place called Hargrave Park. So we went out there, we were there for, about two years living in, a, in, in these horrible Nissan huts, which had been an army base. And then we got this place. And so when we came here, an outside dunny, a bathroom... Oh, my gosh. Um, ..a bedroom for myself, I a know. giant bedroom. And, uh, and so we... I mean, this was... I thought this was... Good. And permanency, a certain sense of permanency, yeah. And we lived here for about two and a half years, which we'd never been anywhere in my life. And so this was heaven. Your mum, Mary, is one of 13 yep. kids. Where is she from originally? She's from Gunnedah. So my great-great-grandmother was, woman, was a Camilleroy woman, was a full-blooded Aboriginal woman. And uh, so that was mum's grandmother on her side. And uh, something she... She was the least racist person I ever met in my life, but she never talked about mm. our heritage. And it was my sister was doing some family history and found it. And then we started to unravel all that. But, um, and I said to mum, why did you tell us about this Aboriginal connection, which I'm very proud of? And she said, it didn't matter. It didn't mm. matter, but it did matter. Yeah. You know, it, it mattered very much. And was she an optimist, do you think? Oh, Mum was fantastic. Mum, Mum believed that uh, that my sisters and I could uh, be Prime Minister or could run the world. Even and do though anything. She, anything at all. Was, mm. you know, she'd have had a bit of garbage man, she'd have been proud. Is that where you get your optimism from, do you think, from your mum? Oh, I think I get everything from my mum, basically. You?